Thank you so much. As I observe you all, and especially Miriam Rajabi, her attitude, her poise, her resolve, and I hear her words, I am struck and impressed by the contrast and significance between this woman, a truly exceptional leader, hoisting with courage and determination the flag of resistance, of democracy, of fair elections, of human rights, of the rule of law, of gender equality, and this other man, Ibrahim Raisi, the officially designated president of Iran, rocketed into power after a sham election and ridiculed by the lowest turnout on record. An election conducted under extreme repression in which women, religious minorities and opponents were barred from running for office. An election where citizens were intimidated and journalists arrested to prevent them from informing about this man, the former head of the Iranian judiciary, known also as the butcher, the butcher for his crimes against humanity, the mass murders since 1988 and until today, the enforced disappearance and the tortures. Ibrahim Raisi's response to reporters when asked about his involvement in these killings was that he should be praised for them and that he was proud of his work. In contrast, Miriam Rajavi claimed this year another impressive victory against impunity with the condemnation of Iranian diplomat Asadullah Asadi for trying to bomb the 2018 annual gathering in Villepinte in Paris, where many of us would have been slaughtered. This is the sheer contrast that we are witnessing. This is the reason we admire the Iranian resistance, and this is what moves us year after year to come and join you all and proclaim our resolve in fighting the Iranian dictatorship by your side, no matter the mask he chooses to wear. Ahmadinejad, Rouhani, or Raisi, they are all one and the same. They are all part of this bloodthirsty monster sitting in history with contempt for the values we share, thinking that they will be the long-term winners because they can get away with lies and bravado, outplay us using our divisions, playing with our governments that come and go, and with the contradictions of our short-term strategies, sometimes wanting to confront them and sometimes trying to negotiate with them. They have been right about that to some extent, but not anymore because they are already defeated and they know they won't prevail. The end is here and it has a name and a face. The name is the name of every Ashrafian and the face is the face of you, Miriam Rajavi. It is because of the example of your resilience and determination that young people in Iran are daring to defy this homicidal regime, burning images of Khamenei in daylight, chanting death to the tyrants and claiming their rights at the risk of their lives. These young girls and boys have never known better. They were born under the tyranny and have lived all their lives under repression. That was their all time normal but they heard you and you have awakened them and given them a new horizon. You, Ashrafians, are the archive of the nation, the source from which new generations can learn about their own past. The memories of your lives are narrating to the Iranian youth how they were 
dispossessed of their future, how, after overthrowing the dictatorship of the Shah, the mullahs robbed the fight of their elders and brought Iranians into slavery. That memory, your individual and collective life, is the truth, the truth that makes people free. You are the custodians of that precious truth that the mullahs have tried to erase and rewrite. And they can meddle with the pages of their history books. They can erase the traces of the mass graves that speak of their crimes. They can even force people on the torture to submit to their lies or by paying them. But they will never, never succeed in taming your hearts. For you are the army of resistance, the freedom fighters of Iran. Your scars, your wounds, your pain, and your tears are the shield against their wickedness. As I was rereading Khomeini's decree to execute the MEK's supporters in 1988, I was once again shocked by the sheer madness of it all. I hope he writes to his subordinates that with your revolutionary rage and vengeance, you will achieve the satisfaction of the almighty God. He calls not to hesitate, nor show any doubt, or be concerned with details. He requires from his executioners to be most ferocious. This is the expression of an insane and cruel mind, demanding from his subordinates in the name of God to hate and kill, to be violent and act as ferocious animals, ordering to appointed officials to violate their own laws without hesitation, to embrace evil without doubt, and to bear disdain for details, pushing his proxies to dive into a dehumanizing spiral of terror and sadistic behavior. That is the essence of this regime. To confront their dehumanization, you have equipped yourselves with the noblest of all human emotions, with love and fraternity, with solidarity and compassion, with hope and joy, all of which I have personally witnessed while staying among you in your camp. You are an army. You wear uniforms and you live in compounds. But what keeps you together is not the hatred, the fear, or the rage, the vengeance, and the ferociousness, but the dignifying thirst of justice and truth, and the immense transforming power of the love you share for your country. It is because young Iranians know this, that they are following you. It is because there is the face of a woman that has suffered and doesn't give up, that represents the strength and the good in sheer contrast to the evil faces of the mullahs that Iranians are envisioning today the end of their nightmare. It is because of you, Ashrafians, that people in all the different regions of Iran are organizing themselves. They want to be ready for the transition to democracy, Miriam Rajavi has promised them. The sacrifices each of you have made, every drop of blood and sweat, every expression of hope and affection, every single effort you have accomplished to survive has brought fruits. Nothing is lost. Every word is blooming. You are the end of the tyranny. Each one of you is the key to freedom. We are here with you, not thinking 
that any of us can do anything better or greater or more defining to bringing down the dictatorship than you. But we are here knowing that you are irreplaceable and indispensable for the survival of Iran and his resurgence with our admiration and our faith in your triumph, we want to magnify your achievements, honor your heroic choice, and stand by you. Because this is the time to march forward at the pace of victors until you win. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Ashraf. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.